Hi. Well, we're back on part two of day 60, and Linda has come to join us. So we're reading um, Numbers, chapter 24, uh, starting at verse 15 to the end, and then chapter 25, and then we'll jump over to Mark in the New Testament. We're reading the NIV, and here she is. Uh, starting at 15? Yes, Yes. Yeah. Then he uttered his oracle, Balaam, and it's oracle. Balaam who's uttering these, and it's his fourth oracle. Thank you. So Thank you for verifying that. There you go. Then he uttered his oracle. The oracle of Balaam, son of Beor. The oracle of one whose eyes see purity. The oracle of the one who hears the words of God, who has knowledge from the Most High, who sees a vision from the Almighty, who falls prostrate. And whose eyes are opened. I wish that would be all of us. I see him, but not now. I behold him, but not near. A star will come out of Jacob. A scepter will rise out of Israel. He will crush the foreheads of Moab. The skulls of all the sons of Rashid, which is death, right? S-H-E-T-H-E. -E. Edom will be conquered. Seir, S-E-I-R, Seir. His enemy will be conquered, but Israel will grow strong. A ruler will come out of Jacob and destroy the survivors of the city. Balaam's final oracle, verse 20. Then Balaam saw Amalek and other his oracles. Amalek was first among the nations, but he will come to ruin at last. Then he saw the Kenites and utter his oracle. Your dwelling place is secure. Your nest is set in the rock. Yet you, Canaanites, will be destroyed when Assur takes you captive. Then he uttered his oracle. Ah, who can live when God does this? Ships will come from the shores of Kittim. They will subdue Assur and Eber but they too will come to ruin. Then Balaam got up and returned home, and Balaam went his own way. Chapter 24. 24 or 25? Chapter 25, Moab seduces Israel. While Israel was staying in Shittim, the men began to indulge in sexual immorality with Moabite women, who invited them to the sacrifices of their gods. The people ate and bowed down before these gods. So Israel joined in worshiping the Baal of Peor. And the Lord's anger burned against them. The Lord said to Moses, take all the leaders of these people, kill them, and expose them in broad daylight before the Lord, so that the Lord's fierce anger may turn away from Israel. Verse 5. So Moses said, to Israel's judges. Each of you must put to death those of your men who have joined in worshiping the, the Baal of Peor. Then an Israelite man brought to his family a midnight, uh, Midianite woman right before the eyes of Moses and the whole assembly of God while they were weeping at the entrance to the tent of, of meeting. When Phinehas, son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest saw this. He left the assembly, took a spear in his hand, and followed the Israelite into the tent. He drove the spear through both of them, through the Israelite, and into the woman's body. Then the plague against the Israelite was stopped. But those who died in the plague numbered 24,000. Wow. Okay, verse number 10. The Lord said to Moses, Penia, son of Eliezer, the son of Aaron, the priest, has turned my anger away from the Israelites, for he was as, was as zealous as I am for my honor among them, so that in my zeal I did not put an end to them. Therefore tell him I am making my covenant of peace with him. He said his descendants will have a covenant of a lasting priesthood because he was zealous for the honor of his God and made atonement for the Israelites. Verse 14. 
the name of the Israelite who was killed with the Midianite woman was Zimri, son of Salu, the leader of the uh, Simeonite family. And the name of the Midianite woman who was put to death was Cosby, daughter of Zur, a tribal chief of a Midianite family. The Lord said to Moses, Treat the Midianites as enemies and kill them, because they treated you as enemies when they deceived you in the affair of Peor and their sister Cosby, the daughter of the Midianite leader, the woman who was killed when the plague came as a result of Peor. Wow. Now yep. we're reading Mark chapter 7, verses 14. 14 Again, Jesus called the crowd to him and said, Listen to me, everyone, and understand this. Nothing outside a man can make him unclean by going into him. Rather, it is what comes out of a man that makes him unclean. 17. 17. After he had left the crowd and entered the house, his disciples asked him about this parable. Are you so dull? he asked. Don't you see that nothing that enters a man from the outside can make him unclean? For it doesn't go into his heart, but into his stomach, and then out of his body. In saying this, Jesus declared all food clean, and that's in the brackets. And then verse 20. He went on, what comes out of a man is what makes him unclean, for from within, out of man's hearts, comes evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, lewdness, envy, slander, arrogance, and folly. All these evils come from inside and make a man unclean. Okay. Okay. The faith of the Syrophoenician woman. Jesus left the place and went to the vicinity of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know it, yet he could not keep his presence secret. In fact, as soon as she heard about him, a woman whose little daughter was possessed by an evil spirit came and fell at his feet. The woman was a Greek born in Syria. Phoenicia. She begged Jesus to drive the demon out of her daughter. First let the children eat all they want, he told her, for it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Yes, Lord, she replied, but even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then he told her, for such a reply you may go, the demon has left your daughter. Verse 30. She went home and found her child laying on the bed, and the demon gone. The next section is the healing of a deaf and mute man. Then Jesus left the vicinity of Tyre and went through Sidon, down to the Sea of Galilee and into the region of the Decapolis. There some people brought to him a man who was deaf and could hardly talk, and they begged him to place his hands on him. hands on the man. After he took his, him aside, away from the crowd, Jesus put his fingers into the man's ears, and then he spit and touched the man's tongue. He looked up to heaven with a deep sigh and said to him, F -ata, which means be open. At this the man's ears were open, his tongue was loosened, and he began to speak plainly. Jesus commanded them not to tell anyone. But the more he did so, the more they kept talking about it. People were overwhelmed with amazement. He has done everything well, they said. He even makes the deaf to hear and the dumb to speak. And that's the end of chapter 7. Yeah. Again, now we're reading in Mark, and before we are reading in Matthew. And in Matthew, it was saying Jesus healed everyone that came to him. And here... People come unto him, and he heals them, whether they're uh, demon-possessed, whether they are 
are deaf or whether they can't speak, praise God. It is so awesome. It's really neat that he doesn't always do it the same way. It's not a pattern. Some he just said, get up and walk. Some he touched them. Some he put mud on them. Some he didn't even go. He just said they're healed. Spoke the words, they're healed. Yeah. Yeah. So there's just, there's no, you can't like, it's not a remedy. You can't no, say, no well, formula. Jesus did this, so a formula. Like if you just put mud, everybody be go around putting mud on each other when they're, when they're ill or when they need a miracle. He can raise the dead. Yeah. So it's absolutely amazing. It's no wonder people talked about it and followed him. You can't, couldn't be quiet. I can't blame him, really. No. But it was kind of like an act of disobedience because he said, don't tell anybody that we did anyway. <laughs> Thanks for reading the first part. Okay. My oldest sister Shannon came over and she's teaching us a new craft. And it took us till 11 o'clock. In to, the night. In the night, just to try to get a grip on it. And so finally Eric said, I think we better go start the Bible study or we'll be up till 1 or 2 in the morning. So here we are, he's a good man, this guy. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. I have to edit it so I get to read the first part all over. Take me another hour to get everything edited and uploaded. Well, she can. I'll go. I'll go sleep. And he'll go to sleep. And we get up right early and drive all the way back to Old Town in the morning. So, anyhow, we better close in prayer. Okay. Let me help pray. I'll pray you, but Heavenly Father, thank you so much for family and for Amen. friends and for faithful people who seek yes, you, Lord. who read your word and, and have, seek to have a relationship with you. Thank you for your grace and your son who made salvation and relationship possible. Thank you for the journey of faith you take us on for all the good things you do in our life. Thank you in the midst of trials and tribulations, you're there. You are hope, you are strength, you are stay. When we watch the news, the world's a mess. And we thank you, Lord, that you give us hope beyond this mess that we've made of the world that you've given us. I pray that you give us a citizen of earth wisdom in how we deal with one another. And how we have relationship with you. Bless us again, O oh Lord, as we read your word. And bless everyone who faithfully tunes in and does the same. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You be blessed. And good night. You too. And I will see you next time. We'll see you in day 61. Yes. Oops. Get down there. Follow the red dot. Follow the red dot.